In today's video, we're going to talk about cell membranes. And from our previous unit, uh, the cells unit, we, we briefly mentioned and discussed the cell membrane or plasma mem membrane. But during our transport unit, we're going to look at it in quite a bit more detail uh, because it really is a, an important feature of different cells uh, in controlling what goes in or out of the cell. So the function of the cell or plasma membrane is to maintain homeostasis. And homeostasis means the balance of a cell's internal environment. Homeostasis means balance or an equilibrium. And so that's really what the cell membrane is doing. And in our image here, here is the cell membrane. We can still actually see a mitochondria here. Here's rough endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus. Looks like a Golgi apparatus right here. What this cell membrane is doing is it's kind of protect, uh, providing some support and structure for the cell as well as a little bit of protection. But really it's controlling what goes in and out of the cell. And here is a cell membrane pore. Here's another one and another one. And these would be locations where different molecules or ions could move across that cell membrane, either into the cell or out of the cell. And that's the purpose of the cell membrane is to really control what's going in and out of the cell. It's made up of a couple of different things. It's got quite a few different parts to it. Um, it's made up primarily of a bilayer of something called a phospholipids. And it's got two parts to that. The phospho portion is something we call a phosphate head. And I'll show you what this looks like in just a minute on a bigger picture. This one here, you can kind of make it out. Uh, these little round circle, uh, purple circles here. These are the phosphate heads. And then the second part is this lipid part. And a lipid is another word for a fat. And so the phospholipid has little fatty acid tails. It's these two little tails here that are each connected to the phosphate head. So a phospholipid, again, is the uh, phosphate head, this purple circle. And then the fatty acid tails, the lipid portion, is right here. And so the plasma membrane or cell membrane is made up of lots and lots of these. You can see here. Each one of these is one individual phospholipid, and we've got a lot of them put together. And what's unique or key about the bilayer is that it's made of two layers of these phospholipids. So here would be one layer, here's another layer. And this is really important, and we'll get to talking about this a little bit more in just a minute. But really what this does is it provides a double layer or a bilayer of phospholipids to make up this membrane. There's also some other stuff within the membrane, uh, specifically proteins, uh, some cholesterol. There's even some carbohydrates attached to some of those proteins. And here in this image, we can see a couple of proteins. This is a protein right here. And this one uh, is actually acting as a channel. It's kind of like a tunnel. And it allows different molecules to pass across or out of that membrane. Here's another protein as well that's acting as a uh, receptor to different signals. We'll talk about some of the functions of these proteins in coming videos. But for right now, you just need to know that the cell membrane or plasma membrane is made of phospholipids and proteins. Um, we'll also talk about cholesterol and carbohydrates a little bit more in the uh, uh, bilayer as well. And here's a better image of our phospholipid. Uh, again, the purple circle right here is our phosphate head little tails, our fatty acid tails. And one of the unique uh, characteristics of the plasma membrane phosphate, um, phospholipid bilayer, is that it's able to bend and move kind of like a, like a liquid almost. It's very flexible and bendable. Um, and so we have this word or this phrase to describe that. It's called the fluid mosaic model. Uh, the fluid portion is referring to the phos uh, phospholipid bi bilayer's ability to bend and move. And even if this, this layer breaks, if the bilayer breaks, it will quickly re uh, re reattach itself um, and reform its bilayer. And so that's the fluid portion. The mosaic portion is really looking at how, uh, if we go back to our previous image here, uh, it's made up of a lot of different parts. There's not just one thing that makes up the plasma membrane. There's multiple pieces or components to it. We've got proteins. We've got these phosphate heads. We've got fatty acid tails. We've got carbohydrates. Uh, there's cholesterol. There's lots of different parts that make up the membrane, and so that's the mosaic. And then the last part is a model. And really, when we're looking at images like this one or like our previous one here, uh, we're using models to help describe or show what it is that we're trying to talk about. Uh, obviously, this is very, very small. Um, if this is the membrane of a cell, it's very difficult to see. We can't see this with the naked eye. And even with powerful microscopes, it's pretty difficult to see. Uh, and actually, the thickness of the of the phospholipid bilayer is about 10 nanometers, which is really, really, really small. Smaller than viruses, smaller than bacteria, far smaller than a cell. 
Um, so this is a very difficult to see. And so when we're looking at something that we can't see or it's difficult to understand, oftentimes we use models. So we have this phrase, this fluid mosaic model, that helps us to really kind of describe the, the cell or plasma membrane. Um, and so the important thing to keep in mind right now is that the plasma membrane, just like what we saw in our bubble lab, uh, the membrane can bend and move and can, it can reform its shape. Um, it, it's very flexible and bendable, and we'll look at some properties of that a little bit more in the future. Uh, oops, too far. Uh, membrane proteins, a uh, couple different types of proteins, and, and we'll get into these in a little bit more detail as we progress, but really what they're doing is that they allow uh, particles, either big molecules or ions, to pass into the cell. And so here's another uh, a blown up image of one of the ones that we looked at previously. This one's a channel protein, and it's actually allowing these molecules or ions to pass across that membrane. Uh, that is one function uh, of a membrane protein. Another is a receptor protein. And this is a protein that acts as kind of like a signal recognizer. Um, maybe a cell sends out a signal, and other cells around it recognize that signal through a receptor protein like this. And, they, and those signals can come from both inside and outside the cell. Um, so it's really providing a way for cells to communicate with one another. It's kind of a very basic way that cells can communicate with one another. Those are two of the many um, uh, properties and functions of membrane proteins. There's more, but for right now, these are the two primary ones that we're going to focus on uh, in detail. We'll take a look at more specifically proteins that are within the membrane that help to move things across uh, the plasma membrane in a little bit more detail a little bit later on. So that's a basic introduction to the plasma or cell membrane as well as some of the components that make it up uh, and some of their specific fun functions.